Hey everyone, it's Brennan with BC Labs, and today we're coming at you with another video, but instead of focusing on Meta Horizon Workrooms, we're going to show a different piece of software that can bring your computer into your Quest 3. So, I know you guys had a lot of questions, a lot of questions in the comments about other options, and some people actually called this uh, software out by name. It's called Immersed, and it's pretty popular. I've actually used it many times on my Quest 2, however, since moving to the Quest 3, I've been experimenting with some of the other options just to see but let's get into it let me show you how to use immersed so now we're going to set up immersed we're doing it on the quest side it will be similar i'm guessing for a pico i believe immersed has a pico client uh quest 2 and quest 3 will be almost identical except you won't have this cool pass through effect uh unless you turn on pass through with black and white on the quest 2 uh, so here, I'm going to go ahead and open it because I already own it at this point. I already installed it. You are going to have to wait a minute before booting it up. So you'll need the Immersed Client, which I will link in the description because it's kind of hard to find, uh, like on the page. If you're using Windows like I am, you'll just click on that. All right, we're going to go ahead and install it. Yep, yep. So we are going to have to restart the PC, which unfortunately, since I just uninstalled this, it's going to have to happen. Okay, so if your Immersed client didn't open, you'll have to search for it and open it or pull it off your desktop. However, if it did open, you're set. Well, it's right, you know, here. But once it opens, if you haven't signed in before, it's actually going to request that little code that I, I blurred out earlier as well as your Oculus username. And that's how it figures out who you are and how to connect. And so that's all you really need. You do have some options in here to enable and disable your virtual displays. Uh, I don't remember, I may have to test if I can have, but see this, you can actually request, so get pro. Mm, I don't have an account yet, I don't wanna see. Okay, so starter is $0. Free forever, $5 a month for Pro. I believe they at least were offering the option to buy multiple monitors for like 35 bucks. I'd have to confirm that. I got an email about it, but maybe they changed their minds. But it's five bucks a month for their monthly build Pro. And I'm pretty sure there's an enterprise option that's not showing here. But I will, I gotta say their website's pretty bare bones and not always the best at giving you all your information. Uh, but anyway, that's that. So once you get your streamer, you, I mean, there's Wi-Fi Direct option if you want to try to set up your computer. Although somebody was stating that it actually does a lot of the the processing and routing of traffic on your CPU, so maybe that will slow down your performance a bit. So it's better to have a dedicated router or to have at least a Wi-Fi network in your home, even if it doesn't have internet, just so that you can you can uh, connect. To an actual dedicated router that can handle the traffic but you do have the option of wi-fi direct i believe there's even a usb option i believe there's even a usb option actually uh, your mileage may vary and i believe that requires side quest which that's a whole different animal we'll get into another video but i think that's all you really need about this is you need to know that you can get more displays it costs money but you can you can enable and disable these virtual displays and set their their resolutions here. I believe that you also can set them in the Windows, you know, Display Manager uh, settings. Again, kind of nice that you have options. All right, well, let's go back to the client on the headset. Is it done? Okay. So we're here in this beautiful grassy field. <laughs> okay. So the cool thing about Immersed is that it has hand tracking enabled right here with the menu. Right. Boom. Okay. So it was already paired with my computer. Okay. So normally, I don't really, without completely wiping out my Quest <laughs> setup, I don't know how to show you. So you'll, that's jittery because I actually have a higher recording frame right now. So it's gonna we're going to suffer to make sure that I uh, can get higher quality for YouTube. Okay, so, come on. I'm pinching, it's just not liking it. So anyway, there you go. Um, pretty good response time. I don't know what the heck that is. 
weird weird flex <laughs> okay anyway so immersed you have your menu here it opens the menu but it's over here okay you can grab it with hand tracking or with your controllers so here you can see your latency which is that's pretty bad oh perfect here's what i was trying to show you this is your my pairing code and my computer but anyway so with this this is my computer this is the latency you can see you can improve performance see like you can reduce limit your monitors twitch environment to 360 photos i don't know um here's your monitor controls as you can see you can configure individual monitor resolutions like here i i don't have mine are set to 1440p but you could set the monitors i would have went a different route with this menu but okay Come on. So there's that one. So I don't know if it dropped them all to that or not. Click on the monitor button, see the possible resolution. I guess it sets them for all three. So you don't, I guess you don't get to pick individual monitor resolutions, which is un unfortunate. This makes your mouse more responsive. Turn this off. See my, okay. Wonder if that's what's causing this this visual glitch. If I get rid of. Yeah, okay. More responsive, but it looks weird, so... Yeah, okay. So, pro tip, I guess if your mouse looks stupid and almost impossible to use, turn off virtual cursor, VR cursor. Not really sure the benefit of that, but... Anyway. So, in terms of computers, as I said, you have this screen. You can snap to grid, so you can get rid of this snapping right here. Where is it? This one? Come on. Or see, like, now they're all individual, which is cool. It means you can set the, their curvature individually and such. But it's a little frustrating if you're wanting to do something like this, where you can literally just throw them on here. Which is kind of nice, for depending on what you're trying to do. So, yeah. Um, I don't... I thought you could actually use your mouse in this, but I've been proven... Oh. Hmm... No, I'm guessing that's just for controller. One disables one hand resize. So that's if you want to use your controllers, I guess. Um, I love hand tracking. I, I can't stress enough how much I love hand tracking on the Quest 2 and the 3. But the 3 is just phenomenal on, on hand tracking. A lot of people are complaining, saying it's not good enough. Blah, blah. It's, it's honestly fantastic. So some people are asking about text quality. Of course, these screens are massive. But in Immerse, this shows you, even at 1080p, I think those are pretty usable. And I'm recording at the same time, so you are going to see uh, more jitter and the the response of both the UI and the software, as well as the response of getting things onto my screen from the computer. And I think it's still pretty dang usable, even with all the concessions there. So let's go back to my full resolution. I guess you go here. Oh. What? So it does go up this way. Sort of? Okay. What? So it like grandfathered me in to use the higher resolution. I think. Oh. So, oh, 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 oh. Weird. So... The virtual monitors, the re oh, because oh, I have two real and one virtual. That's why. So this is the virtual monitor. Just for clarification, this is the virtual monitor. You are capped at what the resolution is that they'll give you. I think it's basically it's 1,200. So 1,200 is your cap in terms of the vertical resolution that they will give you for, on the free tier or the low tier for this virtual monitor. For the ones that you are streaming that already exist on your PC, boom, doesn't matter. They are whatever size or resolution I think that's on your PC. They may have a cap. Maybe they don't do 4K, which, I mean, that's a lot of, that's a pretty high bit rate. So, but otherwise they mirror what's on your PC unless you custom spec them otherwise. Well, so anyway, that's, that's that little tidbit. Anyway, so computers, we already covered all this. My rooms, as I said, there are tons of these. Is there only that many? I swear there's more. 
maybe it's because there's 3D photos. Okay, that's because there's 3D photos. And I'm pretty sure the cafe looks nice. Pretty sure there are more than just... Oh, they're in the store, I think. Oh. Sorry, well, that is... That's probably unacceptable, actually, because of the recording. Let's, we're going to actually go back to this. And, oh, so here, this is important. You can open up your room so other people can join for uh, collaboration purposes. At some point, I'd like to demo that with my other headset. There is a whiteboard. Oh, webcam. What the? I didn't know you could do that. That's kind of cool. Where's the whiteboard? So here's the whiteboard. Come on. Well. So, as I said, some of the more janky things about all of this. Well. is that there are so many more features with um, Immersed, but there are more ways of getting it wrong. <laughs> so anyway, there's your keyboard. I do not keyboard portal. I don't want either one. There are portals here. So I already have that little blue one, or the little... Okay, there we go. So... This is something that's cool is this is something cool about immersed is that you have these portals that you can do. I don't know if you can stretch oh you can stretch them. That's kind of nuts. So they only let you look through one way. You can make them flat. So the cool thing, if I can, so I will say in Immersed, I feel like the hand tracking is more inconsistent than in, in any native thing. Well, but I think that's also just a, the nature of it, like how this works. So anyway, so you got this, you have your keyboard. Whoop. That's better. So you put that over your keyboard, let's say, and boom. Now you have your mouse. Still trying to straighten it a little. Okay. Anyway, so this is like a portal. So you can have your virtual monitors here. I think we're kind of good with that. There's. You can scoot them further back. So if you'd like that more curved feel, or you can go from curved to flat. Whatever you like. I prefer a little bit of curve, but you can actually almost wrap around you, I think. Is it not? Maybe it only requires, yeah, it requires you to have more monitors. And then add screen. Yeah, I don't have any more screens I don't think to use. So anyway, um, Godot. I had to reboot my computer, so I don't have this all ready. But to give you kind of an idea, here's Godot, the game engine. You can actually see some of these. I don't want to give all my, my secrets away, my my bad code, <laughs> but for example, what's something that I can show you? I can show you the README that I haven't written in. <laughs> I don't know. Um, something like that. There you go. There's nothing really to this. There's nothing to it. It's just selecting a type. Um, 
but the concept is that you can read this pretty good. I, I'd say this is very readable. And it, and and this screen is my higher resolution one. If I bring this over, this is actually more readable, I'd say, just because of the scalar effect. It's scaled up. It's worse resolution, so the individual text edges are probably a little worse, but because it's scaled up by Microsoft automatically, it's pretty usable. I would prefer, though, to have the fidelity of a high-resolution screen, but, you know, that's just me. I mean, for browsing the web, though, and stuff like that, you can pull up YouTube, Cormac, what? What is? Okay, anyway. <laughs> the point being is, uh, it, I'd say this is pretty crisp. This very readable text. Yeah. And that's really all I wanted to show. Um, I guess I could pull up a word processor real quick. Uh, quick. Brown. Quick. Okay, maybe I should use that pet. And see, that's the problem with hand tracking, is that when you track your hands, and you, the thing you type with is your hands, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not winning any typing contests, but I wanted to show you. I think that's pretty readable. That's very useful. That's that's completely sufficient for a lot of people. I'm not going to say it's going to replace your OLED 4K monitors. It's not. No matter what you think. Even the Apple Vision Pro is not going to come close. It's just not ready yet. But replacing 1080p monitors or 1440p monitors on the go, or if you have a laptop and you want to throw this on while you know in pass-through while you're at the coffee shop, probably in a good area, but, you know, you can you can extend it, and now you have a full working office. Or maybe you're on a plane, or you're in your hotel room. You just have to bring this little device and your laptop, or if you're desktop while you're in your own house on the Wi-Fi, and you can be watching YouTube videos. Or in some cases, uh, this is not my, my pick for this purpose, but you could use to play games. Like somebody, I saw somebody using it to play Slay the Spire the other day, just carrying it around with him in the kitchen. I believe virtual desktop is more useful for that purpose, but there, you know, there's tons of options, and I'm going to try to work my way through each and every one of them to give you a good review and a, a good setup process for each of the major options, because you shouldn't settle on something just that's okay. You want the best for your use case. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys tuning in, and uh, I hope you guys uh, check out my comparison video that I'm going to be doing soon. Uh, as well as check out the other options, because I'm going to do individual videos for each one and then a comparison to show really what overlap they have and what they don't have. Well, I think that's all I have for you guys on Immersed, so I'll catch you next time.